Aloha and welcome to my home. My name is Kimo and today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite Valentine DIYs from this season. So let's jump right into the first one. These grapevine heart topiary trees start out with this set of five grapevine hearts from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use some bamboo skewers and these faux succulents from Dollar Tree as well. So a very economical craft. I'm going to start out with taking those bamboo skewers and you can see that I've got six of those bamboo skewers there. I only ended up uh, needing four total, two for each of the hearts that I'll be working with. But I'm just using a rag here to rub on some of this dark uh, uh, mini wax stain on on those bamboo skewers to make them a little bit darker so that they can match the tone or uh, the color of our grapevine hearts Now for these Dollar Tree succulents, I'm not actually going to use the plants. I'm going to set them aside for another project. But what I'm really more interested in for this project is these little mini planters that I'm going to use. And you can see that I'm painting on some Waverly chalk paint onto the surface so that we can lighten the color a bit. And I'm actually going to do a couple of coats of this chalk paint. Now setting those little mini planters aside, I'm now going to construct our topiary trees using these really, really cool grapevine hearts that I got from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use some bamboo skewers as well that we've already stained. Now with the skewers, I'm interested in just kind of poking them into the bottom. Uh, and I'm gonna poke two of those bamboo skewers in to kind of mimic the grapevine itself. Now as I'm doing this, I want to make sure that those bamboo skewers are poked into the base of that grapevine heart pretty tightly, but for added security, I'm just going to add some hot glue around the base there so that I know for sure that it's going to stay. And I just want to give a really quick shout out to all of my subscribers, those people who have stuck with me and watched my videos and helped my channel to grow. Thank you, thank you so much for your love and support. It really means a lot to me. And for those of you who are newer to my channel, if you're liking what you see so far, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, I kind of lucked out with this, I guess, ribbon, you could say, or trim. It looks just like a vine, and even though it's made of this ribbon-like material. So I'm going to use that to wrap around both the heart as well as the stem of our topiary tree to give it somewhat of an organic look. Now I'd say from far away, this trim, this vine trim, looks kind of real and up close, it looks like a ribbon. So I kind of like that effect of getting closer to something and realizing that it was actually handcrafted. Um, and I just think that this vine really gives this topiary tree a really beautiful look. Now focusing back on the little mini planters, I'm going to add some red and white buffalo check ribbon to give it a little bit of a farmhouse look. I'm attaching this buffalo check ribbon using some hot glue, just adding a little dot and then traveling around the rim of the planter until we make a full circle. And then I'm going to add another bit of hot glue there to secure it down. And to cover that seam up, I'm going to tie a little simple bow, uh, again with that same ribbon, just with two loops and tying them in a single knot. And now it's just kind of a matter of assembling everything together. You can see that I'm adding more hot glue to attach that little simple bow onto our planter there and fixing things along the way, cutting the ends off to make sure that it's nice and cute and even. And then we're gonna add some hot glue to the base of our topiary trees and stick them right into the styrofoam. You can see that I'm just kind of holding the skewers into place so that when the hot glue dries, it glues exactly the way that I want it to. And then we're just simply going to add a little bit of this green moss, again from Dollar Tree, hot gluing it to the surface of that styrofoam uh, to complete this look. 
And here is our final result for our heart grapevine topiary trees. I think these trees turned out so cute. I love the little details on the vine as well as the grapevine itself. A really beautiful farmhouse high-end piece of home decor. My name is Kimo, and if you've been a subscriber for a while, I just wanted to say thank you. Showing your love and support really means a lot to me, and I thank you so much for your kind comments along the way. If you're new around here and you're liking what you see so far, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to get more ideas on other crafts like home decor, trash to treasure, gift ideas, and other little tidbits along the way. We're going to make a lighted love sign, and this love sign comes from Dollar Tree. It's MDF, but it has a wood veneer surface, which I really, really like. And we're also going to use this set of lights. Uh, it's actually a wine cork bottle uh, light set that I got uh, a little while ago, and it's been left over from uh, a couple of projects that I have in my backyard. But we're going to take this love sign and cut off the, uh, the string, and since there's a little bit of a rough edge, I'm going to use my sanding block to lightly go around the edges of this sign so that it can be nice and smooth. I decided that I would paint this sign uh, in a couple of colors using some stripes. So I'm going to tape off a part of the sign here so that we can paint uh, with our first color which is going to be a white chalk paint. So I'm going to use some white chalk paint, it's the Waverly chalk paint, and I'm going to add a couple of stripes to this project. Uh, I'm going to use a rag to first dab on uh, and paint on some of that white chalk paint directly onto the surface of this sign. And after that, I'm going to use some copper spray paint uh, so that we have a couple of stripes uh, on our wood sign. Although I'm using the white chalk paint here, in retrospect, I could have used some white spray paint. And in fact, it would have given me a bit of a cleaner line and it would have been more opaque. But I decided to go here with the white chalk paint because I wanted to ensure that you could see a little bit of that wood grain popping through the paint. I'm laying down more painter's tape so that we can add uh, a copper stripe over the top. And I've really been into copper the last couple of years or so. Um, so that's just my preference, but you can certainly use gold or silver or rose gold is very cool, very in right now. But again, I decided to go with the copper. And I think one of the things I love about copper is that there are these brown undertones in the paint. And so it really kind of helps to bring out the woodsy feel of this project. As I pulled off the painter's tape, I realized that some of the paint came off as well. Um, so I just wanted to add a little bit of that white paint and detail it in so that we just had that solid white stripe going straight across our sign. Now it's time to add some lights to this project. And for that, again, I'm going to use this wine cork bottle light set um, that I got a little while ago. I used it for a project out on my backyard. I have these um, set of bottles out there. They've got these lights in them. And we, when you turn them on at night, they just glow and they're just so beautiful. But I also realized that these uh, light sets are really good to use for my DIY projects as well. I like the fact that um, they're, it's rather small. And so this battery pack or this cork, if you will, doesn't take up a lot of space and so I can hide it behind a sign like this. Now after I've uh, put that on with the help of some uh, some felt, I just cut out a little bit of felt and then I use some hot glue to secure that, that wine cork in the back. But after that I'm wrapping these uh, lights around our love sign and I'm really loving the vintagey vibes that I'm getting from this effect. 
I'm gonna cut out another little piece of felt there so that I can secure um, the other end of our string lights here. Um, and these string lights are also really cool because the lights themselves have this really cool a yellowy glow and they are on a, a thin wire so that helps to kind of conform to the shape of the love sign as well. You can see that I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to make sure that the lights stick on the back of our sign and uh, that way they won't fall off. And here's our final result. I like this project because it's not only a great little sign, but it also provides a little bit of light, say to your mantle or to your desktop, anywhere you need a little bit of glow and it really creates a nice ambiance in the room. For this romantic heart wreath, I'm going to use a few items from Dollar Tree, including this heart wood sign and some floral wire. Now this heartwood piece will not actually be a part of our final result, but I'm using it as a guide to help me mold that floral wire. So you can see that I'm taking the floral wire and carefully uh, moving it around the heart so that I can create that heart shape. After achieving the right heart shape just the way we want it, we're going to close off that loop by using some tape. Now it is time for some spray paint. Now I could have left the color just as it is because after all it is Valentine's and red is just absolutely fine. But I wanted to go a little bit more modern so I'm using a flat black spray paint and making sure that I get both sides. Once the paint is dried, I decided to add a little bit of twine to really make sure that that edge is secure. Once our twine is in place, I'm going to add some greenery, again from Walmart, and this got a little tricky just because the wire is so thin, so it doesn't provide a lot of surface area, uh, so I just tried my best to use some hot glue to adhere those uh, greenery pieces onto the wreath. But every now and then, I did use some twine to tie down those pieces just for added security. I decided to add some roses because after all, roses are the Valentine's flower. Um, but I decided to go with a white, which can also make this a really great wedding craft. So if you're looking for some wedding ideas or some romantic ideas, this I think is truly transitional and can transform just uh, one holiday. And you can use, use it for multiple occasions or seasons. This burlap ribbon comes from Dollar Tree and I love the chevron pattern of it and the neutral tones. I think it just makes for a really clean and really contemporary modern farmhouse look. I am really loving our final result here. I think it's so beautiful and yet so elegantly minimalist as well. It only cost me probably about three bucks to make and I just love the overall effect. For this Valentine heart ornament, I'm going to be using several of these heart doilies from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack and I'm not sure how many are there, uh, there are in there, but there is quite a few. And I'm going to start by folding them in half. And here I'm folding one doily in half and I'm also going to use for this project some decorative paper. Perhaps you have some scrap paper, a scrap looking paper on hand or other decorative paper, even like a thick wrapping paper or butcher paper would work for this project. But I'm using that folded heart as a template because I'm going to cut out um, hearts from our decorative paper as well. After tracing the heart onto our decorative paper, I'm taking a scissors and cutting out that heart. But you can see that I'm cutting within the line uh, because I want to create that lacy border with the, um, with the paper doily. So I want to ensure that our 
decorative paper heart is just a bit smaller than the doily itself. And if you're new here to my channel, aloha and welcome. I'm hoping that you're liking what you see so far. And if so, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more content on crafts and other DIYs. Now using a hot glue gun, I'm going to adhere these hearts together, uh, alternately starting with the paper doily, then moving on to the uh, decorative heart paper, and then going back to the doily. Again, I've got eight doilies in total that are folded in half, and I also have these eight um, hearts in our decorative paper. And really, my decorative paper here is more like a cardstock. Uh, the paper pack that I got had some high quality paper, and I'm just so happy that I can use up this paper because I don't think that I would really think of using this piece of paper uh, for any other project. So lesson learned, before I go out and buy any new crafting materials or supplies, I always try to see what I've got in my stash that I could use up first. And that way I feel like uh, I'm not lending to my own crafting hoarding problem. <laughs> Now with all of our doilies and our decorative hearts cut out, you can see this effect that we're getting, this beautiful 3D effect. And we're going to now create uh, a hanging mechanism for this ornament. And we're going to actually attach a little piece of a broken earring that I got in my broken jewelry stash. And taking the twine, we're going to simply uh, thread our twine through that little pink earring, which is going to be at the base of our paper ornament. So now that all the hearts have been put together, we're gonna to add our little hanging hardware, uh, or our twine. So I'm exposing the inner edge here. We're going to put some hot glue on that edge, and then we're going to carefully place that twine on the edge so that uh, we have something to hang our ornament with. I'm holding that twine in place just to allow it to dry, and once it does dry, then I want to ensure that I'm adhering the entire ornament to itself. So I'm extending that twine out to the top edge of our ornament, adding some hot glue to the paper hearts, and sticking it all together. And I'm so proud to show you our final result for our paper doily 3D Valentine ornament. It is just so cute and so appropriate for the holiday. This candy heart wood sign is our next DIY. For this project, we're going to use this wood heart cutout from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree also has these little wood letters that I'm going to use, and we're also going to use some of this buffalo check ribbon, again from Dollar Tree. Man, there's a lot of Dollar Tree stuff in this video. We're gonna start with staining this heart cutout with my dark uh, wood stain here, just using a rag to apply some of that stain onto the front of our sign, as well as the sides. I really love this dark, rich, deep brown color that I get from the stain, and that also makes a really nice contrast against the lighter color of these letters. These are wood letters that come from Dollar Tree. They come 26 letters in a pack, which is one letter for each uh, letter of the alphabet. So I had to buy two letters here because I was really intent on creating the phrase be mine because I think that's such a classic Valentine's candy heart kind of phrase. And so I definitely had to buy two of those. And I decided to use some E6000 glue to attach the letters onto the wood cutout, not using a glue gun because sometimes painted surfaces or stained surfaces don't do so hot uh, when we're trying to glue, uh, hot glue things onto that. Even though I love the simplicity and the minimalism of just this dark heart with the lighter wood letters, I decided that I needed to add a little bit of greenery just to make it feel a little bit more organic. So this greenery comes from Walmart. You can see that uh, because it's wire, I did arch the tops of it a little bit to sort of mimic the edge of our heart on the top there. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this uh, buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree on the ends there so that those little wire ends uh, don't poke out and you can't see the metal on them. And then on top of that, I'll add a simple bow.
I'm going to create a simple bow here and attach it to that greenery as well. Just taking two loops and tying them into a single knot. And after that, it's just a matter of fluffing it and adjusting your bow to get it exactly the way that you want it to look. So now we've got our greenery, we've got our simple bow that's attached. Now we just need to assemble everything together. So I'm going to take that greenery and using a little bit of twine and using the holes that are already pre-drilled into our heart sign, I'm going to take some of that twine, uh, do a double knot and then poke them through that hole and attach them on the other side to the hanging ribbon. Now in order to get both pieces of twine through that little hole, I had to use what I like to call the shoelace effect. You know, you get a little bit of tape, you attach it to the end of your twine so that uh, it kind of forms a shoelace uh, tip. And then I use that tip to kind of poke through the hole. It just makes it a lot easier. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side here. Again, getting some twine, um, using that tape to create that little shoelace tip and poking it through till we get to the other side. Now, once on the other side, I'm going to take some of that buffalo check ribbon that we will use to hang this piece. And then I'm going to uh, tie that ribbon with the twine that we just poked through. And you can see here that I'm doing the same thing on the other side with that ribbon, uh, getting it to the right length that we need it. And then I'm just gonna simply snip off the excess twine and the excess ribbon. And moving back to the front of our sign, again, I'm going to apply some E6000 glue to the back of that bow with a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it attaches nicely onto the top of our sign. And here's our final result with our Candy Heart inspired Be Mine wood sign with items that are mostly from the Dollar Tree. And I just think that the overall effect is so beautiful and so simple. And what better message for Valentine's? The first thing we need to do here is actually make our cone trees. And so to do that, I have a poster board that I got from Dollar Tree and I was able to get four different cone trees out of this one poster board, which is pretty cool. So I started by using a piece of string and some uh, and a pen to draw out these cone shapes, uh, as you can see here on the poster board, and I'm gonna cut them out. And then from there, what we're gonna do is to simply roll them up. And it actually took me a couple of times to uh, get the paper sort of used to the idea that you're rolling it and it's going to be curved. And so I might need a little bit of encouragement there, but it rolls up pretty nicely. And I like that it's, it holds its shape because it's poster board. And so we're gonna just close that up by using some hot glue there and rolling it over so that we have a secure cone so that we can then start embellishing. For our first cone tree, I'm gonna be working with two different colors of yarn. These are the chunky yarns, uh, and I just happen to have them in my craft stash, actually, truth be known. Uh, I stole these from my mom, who has done a lot of uh, knitting and crocheting last year. But we're gonna take one of the yarns, in this case, we're gonna take the white yarn, and we're gonna use a hot glue gun to start wrapping it around the tree. And for this first round, I've put in, uh, or I've glued on that white yarn first, and then we're going to secure and glue on the other color of yarn to make sure that we have one full rotation around that cone. Once we have that, then I'm gonna join them together and start gluing them down together and wrapping up the tree. I'm working my way up the tree and you can see that I'm not wrapping too tightly. In fact, I'm letting gravity do a lot of the work by you know, applying hot glue and just kind of draping the yarns over that hot glue uh, and not really pulling them tight at all. I'm working pretty carefully at the top, making sure that I have enough yarn to cover the entire tip of that cone, uh, but I also don't want to have that glue kind of sticking out and getting all over the place.
For the next tree, we'll be using some burlap material that I have on hand, as well as this pom-pom trim that I got at a local thrift store that focuses on uh, providing craft supplies. It's a nonprofit organization that I just love here in Salt Lake City called Clever Octopus. So we're gonna take our burlap and we're going to uh, make sure we have enough material to wrap around our cone. In all truth, it's not really a burlap. It's really more of a fabric that has a burlap kind of effect and texture. So we're going to take that uh, piece that we cut out and we're going to use some hot glue to carefully roll that uh, burlap-like material onto our cone as best we can. I cut out enough material so that there'd be some overhang at the bottom that we can simply hot glue gun into the cone. So here is that pink pom-pom trim that I got from our local thrift store here and I just think it is the cutest thing ever and so appropriate and so cool for our Valentine's uh, craft today. So I'm just going to simply glue that trim on starting at the top and winding my way down to the bottom of our cone tree. I love how this pink pom-pom trim is adding color, texture, dimension, and it's just a heck of a lot of fun. Now, if you don't have this particular pom-pom trim uh, in your craft stash, I think just about any cool trim or ribbon will do. If you're new to my channel and you're liking what you see so far, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video to my channel. And leave me a comment down below and let me know which of these four cone trees is your Valentine's favorite. This next cone tree is perhaps the simplest one that I'm doing today. And I'm using my cone uh, along with some of these rose petals that I got at Dollar Tree. Now they come in a pack. I don't know how many of them there are, but there are a ton of them. So I'm simply going to be using my hot glue gun to glue all of those petals on in rows that start at the bottom of the cone and then wind all the way up to the top. Although all of these cone trees have a Valentine's theme to them, I really think that with just a little bit of a, a, an adjustment, you can use these trees for any kind of romantic setting, whether that be a romantic dinner with your spouse or hubby or girlfriend or boyfriend, or whether it's a, as a centerpiece for a romantic occasion like an anniversary or perhaps even a wedding reception. So I think that there's a lot of versatility to these cones. They're super simple to make overall, and you can experiment with lots of different kinds of textures and colors. Now I'm not exactly sure how many petals I used, but you can see that there are a ton of these rose petals left over, which I'm thinking that I might use for other upcoming projects. We're getting super close with completing this rose petal cone tree. You can see that I'm carefully adding those petals to the top of our tree so that there's good coverage everywhere. 
we have one more cone tree to do to complete our display of four Valentine's cone trees. And for this last one, we're gonna use some of these paper doilies that I got from Dollar Tree. Now I'm simply going to cut them up into quarters. I've got um, the smallest size of the doilies as well as the size just right up above it. These come in a pack of, I think, four or five different sizes. And so I'm going to use the slightly larger doilies for the base or the bottom of our cone tree. And then near to the top of the cone tree, we're gonna use the smaller doilies. So for right now, I'm just gonna cut them up into quarters. And then once that's done, we're gonna start hot gluing them to our cone tree. At the base of our cone tree, I'm gonna ensure that there's a little bit of an overlap so you can see that lacy edge uh, poke out from the bottom of our tree. I'm carefully using some hot glue to attach this to the cone, and you can see that I'm just kind of laying the cone down on my craft mat and rolling it over. This craft mat is actually pretty awesome. It is a silicone craft mat, and you can put hot glue on it, paint on it, and it'll just come right off. I might put a link in my description box below if you're interested in purchasing this. Uh, but you can see that it makes this craft really easy because I don't have to worry so much about that hot glue going absolutely everywhere. You know what I'm talking about if you are a crafter. You can see that I'm working my way up the cone, uh, adding those little quarter pieces of doily as I go with my hot glue gun. Now I'm about to finish things off. I'm working at the top of the cone, carefully fitting pieces so that we have that lacy effect everywhere. And in fact, you can see that I'm cutting out some of that lace so that we just have the lacy edge and not that white uh, solid piece there. I just wanna make sure that we have great texture throughout the piece. And uh, this certainly helps to ensure that we have that texture throughout. And because we're working with paper doilies, you might have some of those little lacy pieces sticking out. So I'm just gonna use the scissors to trim off any excess to make sure that we have a clean edge, especially at the top of our cone tree. With all of our four cone trees complete, I'm gonna show you how I made the base. So I have this Dollar Tree sign and I've actually drilled in four holes so that our dowels can fit into the, each of those holes. The dowels also came from Dollar Tree. And with some chalk paint, I'm just going to brush some of this paint onto our base so that we can really have this beautiful, sleek, white, kind of chic design here that will really complement our trees. I layered on about three coats of chalk paint to ensure that there was good coverage everywhere. Now we have to find a way to insert these dowels into our cone trees. And what I've done is I've taken these dowels again from the Dollar Tree and I have these small styrofoam balls also from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to insert the dowel into our styrofoam ball and add a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it stays in place. With our dowel in place inside of that styrofoam ball, I'm gonna add some hot glue to the top half of our styrofoam ball, which will help us to put this dowel into our cone tree and have it stay in place. After inserting the dowel into the cone tree, I would make sure that uh, you have it stay in place for a while to ensure that that hot glue sets exactly how you want that cone tree to hang. I'm showing you another example of how we're doing that technique, again by applying that hot glue to the top half of our styrofoam ball and inserting it into our cone tree.
Now it's time to place all of our four Valentine's cone trees onto our base and it's simply a matter of sticking those dowels into each of those pre-drilled holes. You may be noticing that I'm not using any glue to secure those dowels into place and that's because the holes are tight enough so that I don't require any glue. And this actually comes in handy if you want to switch up the trees in the future, either rearranging them or coming up with entirely new trees down the road to fit that particular season. And with all of our four Valentine trees done and in place, here is our final result. I love my little love forest. These cone trees are so easy and so fun to make, and I love that they have different colors and textures and really just appropriate for Valentine's, but you can make them appropriate for any season as part of your decor. So what do you think? Let me know in a comment down below which of these trees is your favorite. These paper doily envelopes are so simple to make and I think that they give you a really, really nice result. So we're starting here with a typical Valentine's card. This one I wrote to my mom and I stuck it in this red envelope. And these paper doilies come from Dollar Tree. They come, I wanna say there's maybe five different varieties or sizes that come in a pack. And what you see here is the largest paper doily that I've got. And we're going to just simply fold the ends around our card, starting with the outside edges, then the bottom, then the top. And I'm gonna secure that with just the tiniest piece of double-sided tape so that it can stick together to give me enough time to wrap the twine around it like this. So you can see how super simple this is. It takes no time at all. And to embellish it like this, I think just elevates the idea of a Valentine's card. These little heart shaped wood stickers are so cool. They come from Dollar Tree in a pack as well. And again, it's just a really nice way to embellish your card. Here, I'm working with another shaped uh, doily. This is a heart doily that also comes from Dollar Tree in a pack. And you can see that I've used that doily to create an envelope as well. Using the same technique with the double-sided tape, I'm wrapping some twine around it and also adding another sticker from the Dollar Tree. Now for this project, I use these envelopes um, for the purposes of giving a Valentine's card as well as a postcard. But really you can use this technique for any kind of flat gift, whether it be say a gift card or maybe a framed photo of yourself with your loved one. This is such a simple project to do and I just really love our romantic results. We're going to use some paper doilies to create gift wrap. And this is really just expounding on the idea from the previous project where I showed you how to make envelopes. Here, when we have a 3D gift or something a bit more substantial than a flat card, uh, here's a way to put your doilies together to create gift wrap. So you can see that I have actually four doilies here and I'm using small pieces of double-sided tape to put them together in a cross pattern. Now these particular doilies I actually got at the thrift store, not at Dollar Tree, but you can certainly use the Dollar Tree doilies for this project as well. You can see that I'm wrapping up the sides of the gift wrap over the box and I'm using very small pieces of double-sided tape in the corners there to wrap the bottom piece over the top. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. You'll see me flip it around, add some small pieces of double-sided tape again to those bottom corners so that we can fold in those edges and ultimately fold up that top doily piece to cover our gift. Now you can see that we have this white space in the middle of our gift and so we had a couple of options. At that point in time I could have just simply added another doily to cover that hole and use double sided tape to, uh, to adhere that down. But I decided instead to go for a thick black ribbon that not only covers that hole but it also provides a nice simple backdrop to our wood cutout that says love. This is a great example of how an inexpensive paper doily can really make your gift look high-end. I am a sucker for this heart succulent planter. Get it? 
Anyway, this little glass candy dish comes from Dollar Tree. At least I think it's a candy dish, but we are going to turn this into our planter using some Waverly chalk paint. And I'm also going to add in a little bit of baking soda uh, to create a textured paint. The ratio that I'm using is about one part of baking soda to one part of paint, give or take a little bit. And that creates a really nice thick paint. You can see that the baking soda is starting to react a little bit with the paint in this uh, in this little container here and as I pull out my brush here you'll see how thick that paint has become this is going to be the perfect base uh, to paint on our little glass candy jar here to create some texture Here in this video, I'm only going to show you one coat that I applied to this candy jar. But uh, in reality, I did three coats, making sure that the paint dried in between each coat. That way you can really build those layers and really make a nice texture on the surface of this jar. Once the paint has dried, you can really see this texture that was created on the outer rim of our jar. Just, It's really just lovely. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm actually going to add uh, some painter's tape in a diagonal so that we can uh, then spray on the copper metallic spray paint to create kind of a, a contrast between the white and the metallic of the copper. I loved using the textured paint on this project um, because it gave this project a little bit more of an organic feel. Uh, we are going for a more natural kind of valentine with this project and so it made sense for me to, to do that. But we're not going to stop there. I'm also going to add a little bit of that, met, that metallic shine using some copper spray paint and we're going to create a little stripe so that we'll have this contrast of the white chalk paint with this metallic copper. I'm using copper spray paint for this project because I think that the copper, again, with its brown undertones, kind of has a, has a woodsy feel to it, which I thought would work well with this natural Valentine theme that I'm shooting for. You can see here that I'm taking off the painter's tape and it's revealing this beautiful clean stripe that we have and it really helps to contrast between this white paint, this white chalk paint that we have uh, against this beautiful shiny copper metallic paint. And a few years ago, I went to an estate sale and bought a bunch of pie weight, pie crust weights. Is that what they're called? Pie crust weights. I am not a baker, you guys. So, but I, I didn't buy them for baking. I bought them because I thought that they looked beautiful. They're these little tiny ceramic white balls uh, that are placed into pie crust to help weigh them down when they're baking. At least that's what I think they're used for. But we use that as filler for our vase and I'm adding some succulents, some uh, faux succulents from Dollar Tree with little bits of driftwood and a little heart sticker. And this is our final result. I am just loving all of the different textures that we are able to achieve with this one little project. And the neutral tones throughout really help to make that little red heart just pop. We're gonna make some rose petal houses using those really cute house frames from Dollar Tree. They look like shadow boxes. I also have some of these pink rose petals from Dollar Tree and some of these scrapbooking items. They're not from the Dollar Tree. I just happened to see them by chance at the thrift store, but these little wood cutouts are so cute and I thought that they'd make a really nice addition to these frames. So you can see here that I'm just outlining the square on those cutouts. And the reason why I'm doing that is is because I want to create a 3D effect with those wood cutouts. So I'm adding a little bit of glue, tacky glue, to some of those tower blocks that again you find at Dollar Tree. You can see that Dollar Tree is definitely a theme in this video. And I'm simply going to glue those tower blocks onto the ends of those uh, of that square that I traced out on the back of that house. After those tower blocks have dried, I'm now going to add some of these pink rose petals, again from Dollar Tree, using some hot glue. 
So you can see I'm taking my hot glue gun here, I'm adding a couple of short rows of glue, and then I'm just going to stick those petals on, starting on the outside perimeter of our house here. And so you can see that the glue is really close to the edge, and I'm sticking those petals in so that they come up the sides of our house frame. So you can see that I'm working my way around the perimeter of this house, just kind of turning it as I go, adding more hot glue, and again, focusing on the outer edge. You can see those petals are kind of coming up the sides. And then, once our first row is done, I'm simply going to add more rows so that we really get this nice, beautiful, full uh, effect with those rose petals. So now you can see I've added rose petals to everywhere inside of that frame, getting it ready for the next step, which is to add a little bit of hot glue to those tower blocks, and we're gonna put that love wood cutout sign directly on top. And you can see this 3D effect that I'm getting. It's almost like that wood cutout sign is floating on top of a sea of rose petals. And for our final result, I think these two houses standing side by side give such a beautiful romantic farmhouse feel. This candy heart planter is so fun and so easy to make. It starts off with this squarish glass jar that I got from Dollar Tree, and we're simply going to spray it white with some spray paint. I'm gonna spray paint our jar a couple of times to get a really good coverage, and then I'm going to take these little candy heart stickers again from Dollar Tree and we're going to stick them directly onto our jar in a fun little colorful pattern. We're going to put these stickers on all four sides of our jar and now we're going to add some greenery. You can see here that I'm taking some foam and I'm going to cut it to size so that it fits perfectly snug inside of our jar. This greenery that I'm adding comes from Walmart. I've cut it up into different pieces and sticking them directly into the foam. My goal here is to keep the greenery itself pretty simple because there's so much color and texture and uh, busyness on the jar itself. So I just want to make sure that we have everything clean and simple and the greenery doesn't compete with the jar itself. Now I'm going to make a couple of picks that will go directly into our planter and these are uh, made from some of those candy heart stickers as well and you can see that I'm taking off the paper and I'm going to add a little bamboo skewer in between making sure that we add a little bit of hot glue so that it all stays together. I got some pie crust weights uh, a little while ago at an estate sale that I'm going to use as rocks or filler at the bottom of our planter. And before you know it we have our final result with our candy heart planter. This candy heart planter only cost me probably a few bucks to make, but I love how colorful and fun it is, and it will make the perfect gift for anyone on Valentine's Day. We're going to create what I'm calling a smile wood frame. And this frame actually comes from Michael's, but I've seen it at Dollar Tree before. In fact, I've bought one before and have another video where I decoupage that, that frame. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to kind of keep with the natural, um, the natural wood as much as possible to, again, keep with our neutral Valentine theme. You can see here that I also have this little smile sign. It's a cutout. And I actually got that at a thrift store. It came in a pack of other small wood cutouts and it was a scrapbooking um, material. And so I guess that's one good word of advice. If you're looking to create art or to create different layers of textures, um, scrapbooking items can really be a wonderful addition to your projects. 
I use that little smile cut out to create some lines here on our frame that will help to define where we're going to paint. If you are new here to my channel and checking me out for the first time, aloha and welcome. I really hope that you're finding some value here and you're liking what you see. If so, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you can get notified every time I upload new stuff to my channel. I'm using some painter's tape to define the areas that need to be painted and I'm using my rag again uh, with some white uh, Waverly chalk paint, um, dabbing it into that paint and then applying it to our frame almost like how you would apply stain to wood. Now instead of the chalk paint, I could have gone with a white spray paint. Uh, I think that actually would have been a lot easier and a lot quicker to go with the spray paint, but I decided to go with the chalk paint because I did want some of that wood to show through the paint and with spray paint, I think it would have been a little bit too opaque. But I did help also to define the areas where we would apply our copper spray paint. And you can see we have one stripe there. And I'm just going over the top a few times with that copper spray paint. And we'll let it dry. And that will add a little bit of that metallic sheen that I'm going for. And now stay tuned for a mistake in three, two, one. So because of my carelessness, I actually got a little bit of copper paint. You can see when I remove my thumb, the thumbprint is there. And you can see I'm realizing it, trying frantically to get that copper paint off. Well, to no avail. So I decided to do my best to try to camouflage that mistake. And I'm adding more painter's tape here to apply a couple of white stripes to the frame that I hadn't originally anticipated. But in the end, I think it was the right decision. So I'm going back over with some white chalk paint uh, with that staining technique, if you will, using my rag, and that will help to cover up my little careless error. But you know, I believe that things happen for a reason. And at the end of the day, I believe that these two additional white stripes did add to the overall effect. With the paint dry, now it's time to add our little smile cutout to the frame. And I'm going to use some tacky glue to do that. You know, because this is a cutout, I really wanted to take advantage of that. And so that's why I decided to create that copper stripe on the back so that the word smile can really show through. Now really all that's left for us to do is to trace out that heart onto a photo that we can pop then into the back of our frame. And after that, here's our final result. I think one of the things that I love the most about this project is just how simple it is. The simple tones, the simple shapes and stripes, it really all lends to a really beautiful result. This simple heart banner uses items from Dollar Tree. I have here these square wooden planks as well as some felt hearts with the beautiful lacy embellishments around the edge. And so for these uh, pieces, they are four and a half by four and a half inches. And you can see that I drilled some holes at the top of each corner uh, on each of those wood pieces. The holes allow me to string some of that thin ribbon that I've got through those holes to create our banner. To make the stringing a little bit easier, I added some tape at the very tip of that ribbon to kind of turn it into a shoelace. I love making banners because they are usually so simple to make and yet they really provide a nice impact to any space, whether it be Valentine's Day, an anniversary, a baptism party, or a birthday, banners are the way to go. So I'm almost done stringing that ribbon through each of our six wooden squares. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of those felt hearts again from Dollar Tree and look, they fit perfectly on those squares. I'm simply going to take some hot glue, 
put it on those hearts and slap them on those wooden planks and you'll see that we'll have just this beautiful contrast between the lighter wood, the neutral wood, and the dark and deep red of those hearts. Now, if I wanted to, I could have added maybe more embellishments or I could have stained or painted those wooden planks, but I decided to keep everything very simple and very natural looking. And I love our final result here. You can see the deep contrast between the lighter natural wood and this really beautiful deep red of those hearts. So simple, so beautiful, and so super affordable. This banner cost me probably about two bucks. This decorative vase uses a jar from the Dollar Tree, as well as some ribbon, a paper doily, and a butterfly sticker. I'm using two kinds of ribbon here, starting with a really thick black ribbon that I'm just going to uh, hot glue onto our jar. And I thought that, that would provide a nice base for our doily, which will go on next. I'm applying a little bit of hot glue to our paper doily, and then I'm going to stick that onto our ribbon and our vase. After that, I'm also using a narrower pink ribbon to wrap around the entire jar over the doily. And I found a pack of these beautiful butterfly 3D stickers from Dollar Tree. Oh my goodness. And I just add a little bit of hot glue there and look how beautiful it is already with just some few simple materials. So I'm gonna add some filler to our vase and here I have some pie crust weights that I bought at an estate sale a few years ago. If you've seen other previous uh, Valentine videos that I've done this season, they have made an appearance in a couple of other videos. I just really like them. But I'm just filling up our vase and then I'm gonna add a little bit of greenery at the top and it's really that simple. Before you know it, here is our beautiful final result. A Dollar Tree vase, some ribbon, a paper doily, and a Dollar Tree butterfly sticker is really all it takes to make a beautiful Valentine's vase. If you're looking for a quick, easy, and a beautifully striking way to dress up a gift bag, it doesn't get much easier than this. I'm just going to hot glue a paper doily to the surface of our bag. Then after that, I'm going to get one of these butterfly stickers from Dollar Tree. Again, they come in a pack like that, and I'm just going to stick it on. And before you know it, you have a beautiful 3D lacy romantic gift bag. And in our final result, I just added our gift and a little bit of red tissue paper to really bring out the red and the color of the butterfly. And I think this looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. And wishing you a happy Valentine's Day.